Hello. If you're watching this video, it's not by coincidence. It's because God wants you to hear the words which I'm about to say about how he's raising up his children for battle. Um, so stick around to find out more. guys, my name is Velvet, and if you're new to this channel, I make videos on how to improve your relationship with God, others, and yourself. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to get notifications. Um, but I'm just going to jump on into the video today. It's something that God really put on my heart about what he's doing in the spirit right now, and I felt it for quite some time. Um, for almost a year, actually, about how God is really raising up his children um, to stand firm on the promises in the word and be bold and confident and speak truth with authority to everyone and anyone around us whenever the Holy Spirit prompts us to do so. Um, this is a time, a very interesting time right now because obviously the pandemic has been going on for the last year, just about a year. I mean a year in other countries and then it really hit America in March 2020. Um, but with the pandemic, obviously there's been so many effects on people financially, emotionally, um, physically, just in, in all realms, and especially spiritually. There's a lot of depression and hopelessness, a spirit of suicide, um, a spirit of basically just throwing in the towel and um, being discouraged. And there's a lot of um, deceiving that's been going on. There's a lot of confusion that's been going on. There's a lot of uh, uh, lies that's, that have been circling around and a lot of fake news. And it's hard to tell sometimes which, which way is up and who you can trust and who you should believe and where you should look um, to find your news sources and things like that. But above all, um, God is really raising up his children and encouraging them in the truth to be bold, to, to be the truth tellers because above all, um, you know, we need, we need to go to God first, we need to seek, seek the kingdom first, and then all the other things will fall into place. So um, I know especially for me last year, God gave me a really sweet opportunity to be at home a lot more. Obviously pandemic, um, a lot of people were forced to be at home and were unemployed and things like that. I am a I'm a caregiver, so I am essential. It's funny how many businesses are considered essential, actually. Um, but I did leave the house to go to my clients' houses. Well, really just one last year. But then I also had a lot of time to really reflect on things and just enjoy the presence of the Lord and to um, just really soak in His Word and soak in worship and especially practice being still. And it's, it's those times when we... Um, when we really come before God and are still and we tune out the, the distractions and turn off the cell phone and turn off the computer and turn off Instagram and turn off Facebook and turn off the news and just leave our worries behind us or bring it to the foot of the cross and leave it there. Um, it's really during that time that we're going to hear from God and we're going to um, be able to see spiritually, you know, what what is God saying? What is God seeing? Where does God, where is God leading me? Where does he want me to go? Where does he want me to spend my time? And so God really laid some things on my heart um, over the last almost year about what he's doing. And really the heart of it is, and I keep seeing this vision, I, I guess I would call it a vision, but it's, it's, it's a picture in my mind that God keeps bringing to mind about how he is the rock of Christ, you know, God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, three in one, um, is the spiritual rock that we can build our houses upon, that we can build our foundations on, that we can stand firmly on and we won't sink. And when we build our life upon that rock, our foundation is strong because we have Jesus as the cornerstone and we can stand confidently knowing that nothing can shake us no matter what storm comes across and this vision or sight whatever you want to call it that a uh, that keeps coming into my mind is of um, me standing on a rock and other Christians standing on rocks in the ocean that are sticking up kind of like a sandbar like just just breaking the surface of the water and there's people in the water everywhere just sort of like flailing and thrashing and drowning and just you know needing help and, and then you have the Christians that God has chosen to, he has elected and he has risen up and, and he has given 
the truth to and he's given his Holy Spirit to and he has filled with the light of the world and he has called to go out and lead others to the kingdom and point others to the kingdom and in this this vision or I'll, I'll just call it a vision that I keep that I keep seeing and that keeps coming to mind um, there are storms that come and waves that come and the waves just come and crash over everybody and the Christians are just standing firm on the rock and they're not getting blown off. They're standing firm and they're able to then reach out and help other people and either throw, um, you know, whatever those rings are to people and bring them to the rock or to just extend an arm, a hand and call people out and bring them to the rock that is Christ. And um, God has really just put it on my heart to share with you today that he, first of all, he is speaking. He is speaking and he has so much to say. And something that my pastor said this past Sunday was when you open your Bible, God is speaking. And we know that the word of God doesn't change. We know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that God's word is alive and active. And so when we go and we read the word of God and we hide God's truths in our hearts and when we eat the living um, bread and water of Jesus, um, we are just getting more wise. We're filling ourselves up with the truth and we're, we're being poured into so then we can pour out to other people. And there's this quote, I'm not sure who said it. Maybe if you know who said this, please leave it in the comments below. But it's, um, and it might even be scripture. I'm not exactly sure. But it's like when, like when you see, <clears throat> you can tell like when someone spends their time with Jesus like you can see it on their face you can sense it in their you know in like the spirit that they have that they give off um you can tell like that person has been with jesus it's it's some quote and i i have not exactly tried very hard to find out who said it but anyway um i remembered most of it or at least the heart of the quote heart of the message is that the more time you spend with god the more um filled with god you're going to be the more uh, renewed your spirit will be, the more restored, the more refreshed you'll be, the more ready you'll be for battle. And that's essentially what we're in. Let's not forget, like essential, it is essential to remember that we are in a spiritual war right now and we know the ending. We already know that we're victorious, so we've got to now walk it out day by day. And we have a real enemy who is always trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to ruin our, our chances at doing God's kingdom work. He's trying to destroy um, the work that we've started and prevent any further work from happening. He's trying to discourage us and turn us away from, from God and from his plans for us. He's trying to distract us. He's really, really good at distracting us, especially with cell phones and social media. It doesn't take much for a lot of us. Um, I'll just speak for myself here to get distracted by something like, oh, I gotta check my email. You know, when I was about to start praying or something, about to start reading my Bible, like, oh, I gotta respond to this text real quick. And then all of a sudden I'm like texting like 10 people. And I'm like, whoa, I just like lost half my Bible study time. And then, you know, whatever, then I ended up not doing it or just it's not as rich or something. Um, but yeah, Satan uses all of those tactics to distract and deceive and discourage us and deter us um, from doing God's kingdom work. But God is all powerful. God is omnipotent, all powerful. God is omniscient, all knowing. Um, and God is omnipresent. He's always with us. He's everywhere. And his Holy Spirit is relentless. And God has just been so sweet to me. He's just relentlessly been pursuing me and just tapping me on the shoulder, whispering to me, calling out my name. You know, he lays convictions on my heart. And I just am so thankful that God doesn't leave me alone. And God doesn't leave you alone either. God is always always going to come back for you because he is our shepherd and he calls his sheep by name and he has so many plans that he wants to carry out through you but he needs you to come to the fountain and get filled up so that's basically what this video is about is is just me encouraging you to not stop going to the fountain and drinking in the living water get in the word of god 
get into prayer, no matter what it takes. I was just telling a girlfriend yesterday who said she wanted to start praying more. I said, girl, today, just, just take five minutes with God. Just five minutes, even if you're in the bathroom, if that's only the, you know, the only time you can get, just turn off your phone, turn off notifications, you know, put away any distraction and just get before God. Better yet, get on your knees. Better yet, close your eyes. If you can't do that, if you're whatever, driving or whatever, do what you can, but five minutes, just start with five minutes and see what God says. Maybe you're just going to be quiet in his presence and you're just going to listen out for his voice. Maybe you're just going to cry. Maybe you're just going to just going to speak and he's listening. He's listening. He's always listening. He's just sitting there, just listening, delighting in whatever prayer requests we have, whatever we're saying. He's our long-suffering, patient Father, our ever-loving Father, who already knows the words in our mouth and the thoughts in our head before our brain can process them, before we can formulate them to come out. He knows everything that we're going to say. He's written all the days of our lives before we were even born. It's not a surprise to God, but he treasures those moments with us because that's where we come together and build that relationship. Just think of your best friend and how you became best friends. It took time, it took quality time together, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in groups, corporately, fellowship. Um, just the more you sow, the more you reap. Um, that's biblical. We know this. We know this, the law of reaping and sowing. Something my dad always talked about, actually, shout out pops. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I wanted to come and say today, um, to be encouraged that, you know, A, we're in a spiritual war. B, you need to go and get filled up at the fountain to be prepared for the war. C, you're not alone. You have a real enemy who's trying to make you feel like you're alone, but you're not alone. So go seek out those wise brothers and sisters, wise counselors, that one friend who you know is really devoted to God, or just crack open your Bible, start somewhere, but God is speaking and he wants to talk to you and you've probably felt the same nudges that I have. Children of God, he is calling you right now. God is pursuing you and he's never going to stop. So I hope this was encouraging to you. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And just a uh, last thing I want to say is in that vision that I keep on having, it just keeps on coming to mind, is to remember that we're blessed to be a blessing. And this is not about us. You know, we're fighting for for God. We're fighting for the kingdom. I mean, really, he's fighting through us if we allow him. But it's for the purpose of bringing other people into the kingdom and glorifying God and just showing Christ to the world and reflecting his image. So keep that in mind. I'll do another video on this about being blessed to be a blessing, but just be encouraged. The war's not over. We are victorious. We just now have to walk it out. And the way we can do that is to put on our spiritual armor um, through the word of God, the living word that is Jesus Christ. So love you all. Thanks for coming by. I'll talk to you later.